This video is entitled, God is the Same Yesterday, Today, and Forevermore. It's a very true statement, my friends. So many Christians just seem to forget that God doesn't change. The same God who created the heavens and the universe in six days, and on the seventh day rested. The same God who made man out of the dust of the earth in his own image, who created woman out of one of his ribs, who performed all the miracles, all of the wonderful things that happened in the Bible. He's the same God of today, yesterday, today, and forevermore. God never changes. God's word never changes. What God said in the Holy Bible that was required for his children back in the Bible days to make it to heaven are the exact same things that are required of his children today walk on the face of the earth. They haven't changed. God is not like some people think he is, uh, an old man who's being pushed around in a big wheelchair by an angel with a hear and, the, and he has a hearing aid and a blanket on his lap and, the, and some warm milk. That's a bunch of baloney. God is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. He's the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the universe. He has power that's unlimited. He always has been. He is. He always will be. I know it's hard to wrap our human brains around that, but he's always been. Before there was time, there was God. And if you think that God is, you know, some kind, gentle old man or a kinder, gentler version, a more lax or more permissive, a more easygoing version than he was in the Bible days, you're dead wrong, my friends. God has not changed. He doesn't change now. He's not going to change. We need to understand this as well when we're looking at seeing if God if you think that God can't do something today like he did in the Bible so let's say for instance that many Christians that have terminal illnesses they have a pet that's terminally ill a neighbor or a friend or a loved one um, they have to have a certain amount of money by a certain time or they'll be thrown out in the street and or they lost their job and have to have a way to be able to <coughs> excuse me to survive the same God of the Bible the same God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob is the same God of you and me today he don't change all it takes is to have the mustard seed faith that Christ talked about in the Bible the tiny little seed with a huge huge power turns into a monster tree that's the kind of faith we have to have and we have to understand that prayer our prayers are the key that unlocks any door, but faith is what opens that door. If we have the true mustard seed faith, if we pray believing in our hearts 100%, speaking with our mouth 100%, knowing that God will answer, then yes, God will answer all of your prayers as long as they're within his holy will. He don't change, my friend. He don't change at all. In the same way, if you think it's okay to surf internet porn or to shack up with another woman or man or think it's okay to be in a gay relationship or lesbian or any other kind of filthy perversion that's linked to that kind of stuff or you think it's okay to do any kind of sin the way that the Bible condemns then again I'm sorry but the Bible doesn't change what was sin back in the days of Adam and the days of Noah and the days of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah the children of Israel and Egypt and the wilderness everywhere is sin today the Ten Commandments are still as relevant today as they were when they're written many people will tell you that the Old Testament oh no the Old Testament that's just old stuff Jesus came down and died on the cross so don't think about the Old Testament anymore that's baloney the Old Testament is just as relevant today as it was when it was written everything in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is totally relevant I don't care if the Pope and the Vatican says that Genesis and Revelation are just fairy tales and they they were just made up from old myths and legends and they aren't true They have their reward waiting for them in hell unless they repent and return to Jesus now very soon But for the rest of us who follow Christ or who profess to follow Christ His word don't change my friends what he said we have to do then we have to do now So let's stop putting limits on God. Let's stop thinking that God uh, can't do what he used to do Let's stop thinking that any problem we have is too big for God to handle Jesus himself who was God 
the God man, God in the flesh, God manifest in the flesh. He said that if we have the faith of a tiny mustard seed, we could tell that mountain, be cast, move and be cast into the sea, and it will happen. And Jesus meant that literally. If there's actually, if it takes moving a mountain and casting it into the sea to make God's ministry work, that mountain will go. But the main mountains are all of our problems in life, all the toils and, and heartaches and sorrows and disease and suffering. That mountain will move, my friends. I've seen God do it countless times through my prayers. Not that I'm anything. I'm a nobody. I'm the least in the kingdom of God. But I have that mustard seed faith. I have the gift of faith. I prayed for it and received it. And I pray knowing in my heart, speaking with my mouth, knowing that God's going to answer my prayers. And he does. He'll do it for you too, my friends. His word never changes. Just try him. His word never returns empty. So let's start getting serious. Let's start believing that God can do whatever we need as long as it's within his holy will. Don't ask him for all this prosperity doctrine stuff like, you know, I want a new fancy car or I want a really cool boat or a real extra fancy house or, I, you know, I want a prettier wife or more handsome husband or, you know, I want this, this and that. Forget that stuff that all the, the, you know, prosperity doctrine peddlers teach you and they try to twist the Bible around and try to lie. They even have gone so far now as to lie and say Jesus died on the cross so we won't be uh, poor so we can have a lot of money these people are so wicked and evil they need to just stop just time out just stop it's time to quit before you get cast into hell don't be mocking god don't be twisting his work at the very end of the bible revelation the very last book the very last chapter the very last verse god says that anyone who adds even one word to this word to him i will add all the plagues contained herein and whosoever removes even one word from this word, to him I will remove their names from the Lamb's book of life for eternal life in heaven. God don't play, my friends. He's serious. And it's time for us to be serious. Know he can answer our prayers and know that he holds us to the same standards he held people to in the Bible days. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that people understand that you're not playing around. You're not some old school God that used to do things in the old days and now, you know, you're letting things go. It's not like where... You know, if we have children, the oldest child always gets upset because they say, well, you guys got easier on the second child and you're real easy on the baby and you let them break rules. God doesn't play that game. God's rules are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. They don't change. Help us all to realize that, Jesus. Help us to just fall on our knees and repent when we sin and when we, you know, discredit God and disrespect Him and you and just don't do the right thing. Just help us to be pure. Help us to be holy. Help us to be righteous. Though our own righteousness is filthy rags, through the Holy Spirit living in our hearts and controlling our lives, we can be pure and holy through His power, never through ours. Help us to wake up, understand where we are, and to get serious for you, Jesus. The time is now. No time to play church. It's time to be real. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. And always, my friends, if you're watching this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I know I've sinned in my life. I've done bad things, and I'm sorry. I believe in my heart that you died on the cross for my sins when you came to earth and lived as a man, a God man. I believe that on the third day you rose again and went back to heaven to the right hand of the Father. And since that day you've been preparing a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Please cleanse my heart. Live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, my friends, he will always answer every one of your prayers. His word says it, and it means that Jesus says in the Holy Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Everyone. If you'd like me to pray that prayer with you, send me an inbox or private message. I'd love to pray with you. I, I, I would love to do it. I do it on Facebook. I do it here. You can call me. We'll pray over the phone. If you have a friend, a loved one, or a neighbor who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you need a job, a roof over your head, if you need transportation, if you need food on the table, clothes on your back, water to drink, Whatever your needs, if you'd love, like me to pray for you, send me an inbox, a private message. I would love to pray with, for you or with you. I live to pray for people. It's my joy. It's my life's joy. And I will pray believing in my heart, speaking with my mouth, knowing, just as I spoke in the video, that God will answer all my prayers as long as they're within His holy will. He'll do the same for you. I know we're all really busy, and I appreciate you taking time out to watch this video. Please don't let it in there. Please don't just watch yourself. Share with everyone you possibly can. Let's get the word out. Let's just, don't hide it under, a, under a, a lampstand and just, let's just let our light shine so many can be reached and be saved and repent of sins and iniquities and be healed of diseases and miracles happen in their life and be motivated 
to get up and reap the harvest. Never for our glory, always for Jesus Christ. It's zero percent us, hundred percent Jesus always. And I love you guys, and I pray that God bless you. Good night.